What's up? Hello. Welcome, welcome. Whoop. Eep. Whoop. Eep. Today is the fire dungeon. We're gonna work on like an item where you you can be protected from fire damage, and you're always gonna be pummeled by fire all the time. It's like it's so hot that you just take damage unless you have this certain item. So I'm working on um. <clears throat> I need to get some walls, obviously, some doors, and stuff like that. And but basically, first I want to uh, do this damaging thing. So the whole time the player's in here, I want um, I just want him to be taking damage. Oh, hold on a second. Let's check if the music's on. Maybe we can turn that on. There we go. Hey, what's up, Master Pedro? What's up, Sal Dongs and Jonah? Howdy, guys. What's up? Okay, right, got sound now. Nice, nice. So, yeah, these are these new wizard uh, guys. These, like, fire wizards, they shoot fireballs. Uh, the, there's one more thing I gotta do with the fire wizards here, and that's to make when their fireballs hit stuff, they're gonna do a sweet ass fiery explosion, and everything's gonna get lit on fire. Um, and then of course I'm still working on, today I'm working on walls, doors, and all this new stuff in the fire dungeon. <laughs> it's hot stuff. You found a bug, what's that? You're waiting for job interviews. Oh, you tired of being on vacation? Dude, congratulations. The man writes a PhD, and he's ready to do more. I mean, uh, writes his thesis. Sorry, I get those. I think your words confused, as you probably know. Okay, so first goal is um, I'm going to make... So the player takes damage all the time in this dungeon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I'm going to create an attribute that defines whether a dungeon has like a a damage type. <laughs> Clear off someone's desk and put your stuff there. Uh, I love you. I love your plan. Oh, uh, Jonah, the blink orb is bound to two buttons when you combine it with an element. Huh. Is that only in the can you can you give me an example? Which which um which two did you use? I'll go try it. Constant damage. Fire. I think that's good enough. What's up, Woogie? Come on, we're doing the constant damage to fire dungeon today. This is gonna be so um you just take damage all the time. Okay, so this is going to be worked into an area, so an area has like a um, constant damage type or something. <laughs> Work in the White House. <laughs> constant damage. Your hard drive's failing? Oh, damn. So let me put this function in real quick. Get tile, get rand. Here we go, this will work. UN64 type, get constant damage. 
Mid damage mask. And should I have set constant damage mask? Nah, we wanted to use that at first. Wait. Nah, yes, yeah, I should just have that. Set constant damage mask. Okay, get that combined. So, Jonah, you bound it to your L button, then combine it with the fire element. And when I got out of the crafting room, it's also bound to R. Oh, I can, I can see how that would happen. Let me try that. Actually, that's good enough. That's a great enough description that I can just put that on the, bu the bug list. I don't necessarily need to take five minutes and try that because I totally believe you. I know. I think I know what's going on there. The uh, there are different items, you know, like different item codes or whatever for that. So um, start with blink bound to L, then craft with fire, and it's bound to R as well. All right, got it. You make it backups now, good man. What's up, Zanger? <laughs> Steve, what's up, Steve? <laughs> Whoa, Pedro. A dangerous neighborhood full of old people. They're really dangerous too, huh? Wow. Krav Maga is like the most, isn't it the most badass of all martial arts? Like you just, just saying it, you sound cool. Okay, so I'm going to give every area this constant damage mask and create the two functions so they can be set and stuff stop digging up their yard and then you could double blink. Oh my god, that's crazy, really? I could try that really quick, it sounds fun. And then you can double blink. I need to check that part out. See if it's cool or right? Maybe it is cool. Maybe it's like leave that glitch in, but maybe it's maybe it's kind of stupid. What do you think, man? Is it stupid or cool? <laughs> yeah, they ain't afraid to die. Got gum to death. Ay ay ay. What a way to go. Right? Just just somebody just sort of gnawing at you with gums for a long ass time until you finally Finally entropy is taken over and you you've wasted away. What a way to go. Oh my god. <laughs> Just watch your back. Oh yeah, you got it. Steve's got a good point. What if they haunt you? What if they come back from the grave? That's why it's so dangerous. Gummed. What is this, Florida? <laughs> uh. 
All right, two methods hooked up. And, and now we've got some world stuff to hook up so it can parse that data and turn it into meaningful, turn it into each area possibly having some constant damage. I'm thinking when you come down the elevator for the for this dungeon, this is the fiery dungeon, you get in there, um, the first room, the entrance, I think is gonna be safe. So you're not instantly just taking damage to set while you're on the elevator or whatever. But the second you go into another room in the fire dungeon, it's just constant damage all the time, except for maybe some small pockets. Like maybe there's like a small piece of this, dun whatever dungeon this is. Like maybe there's just a few areas where there's just pockets of relief. So if you're speed running, you can get into this dungeon and like, let's say you're speed running and you don't have the defense item that protects you from fire damage. You can start here in the entrance and then um, and then run your ass as fast as you can through the through all the rooms that have the damage and then maybe there's like a pocket where you're like oh my god I can you know rest here or whatever I think it'll make it pretty interesting for speed runs you have to suck on ice cubes <laughs> you had level three blink yeah oh yeah level three blink you can get places pretty fast huh I think of it kind of like running, you know, like, like if you have the boots as well, the boots help you run faster. And then if you have boots and you, and you have level three blink, you can travel pretty fast, but I'm still thinking there should be a warp. There should be some kind of warp ability or, or not the warp ability, but using the teleport more versatile, right? So you can, you can use the teleport cube to warp to the west edge of the overworld or the east edge of the overworld, or maybe like you can warp to any of the refill spots that you've refilled that and saved that, something like that. Oh, with the double blink? Oh, so it took your blink and then doubled it? Oh my God, I, can, I really gotta try that. <laughs> Sounds funny. So now I'm looking it up, so uh, when it creates a dungeon, it can choose which rooms it wants to be constant damage, and it can even set the mask for what damage type that should be. And battery powered? Ooh, ooh. I like inverting things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna parse some mask. So be attributes dot constant damage. Get the string and then parse that into um, words. Look up. Words, filters, the word we have is this word, and that should, I think I already have a function for this, but there we go, cool, we got constant damage, let's set a breakpoint here, oh, wait, hold on, let's set a breakpoint if there is some constant damage, just to confirm that this is working. Maybe for the EMF lighting armor? The what lighting armor? Oh, lightning armor. Oh. Oh, I get it. Uh, okay, so now it needs to decide um, which rooms to put 
the damage mask. Let's go if flag if it's not um, the entrance. Um, corridors. No, nah, corridors are pretty damn awesome ones to have burning. Maybe like the puzzle room. Um, the goal room. Shouldn't have it there. Maybe the before boss room too. And maybe the boss, I'm not exactly sure. We'll try this out. All right, so, hmm. Let's make sure that works too. Okay. Free pocket into salad dogs. Damn! Welcome, welcome, Halfbeck. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so this dungeon is dungeon number one. Okay, but I put every single dungeon as the fire dungeon for now, just to test this out. So yeah, we got a constant damage mask, and it should be some one bit. Yeah, we got one bit, nice. Uh, all right. And then, yeah, it's setting it right here. This area's got constant damage mask. All right, cool. So next up, I'm going to go to the health system, and when it's ticking the health system, and it determines that you are the player, it just constantly <laughs> gives you damage. So this will be this will be um, fun to dial in, like how much, how often it should t it should damage you. Is running the shield, running the recharge, the invincibility, flashing the invincibility, beeping if you have low health. Ah, here we're getting the player. All right, might as well do it down here. All right, so this is gonna be um, do constant damage. Get the current area. And if this is the player and we are doing constant damage,
then we do some damage. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is gonna be pretty simple just to make it based on the tick. So the tick number mod, a certain number gives you the tick that you should apply that damage on. And then you have to, it'll be the damage mask to determine whether it should apply or not. So, like, if, oh, let's do it up here. Cause damage greater than zero and tick, get tick, mod, um, K number, K ticks per second. So if we did mm, just one of them, Mm, just leave that. Okay, cool. L round F K takes per second times one and a half, so that's every one and a half seconds. I think I'm gonna keep that at one for to start with. We're gonna damage the player. HP delta minus one. Change your hit zero. Nothing is damaging you, but the area. Okay, let's see if it works. So it should be constantly damaging the player right here. <laughs> it's crazy the player's using this shield though. knocked back, which is looking kind of weird. Actually, it feels cool though, to play like this and you're just, you're like being jostled around. This is kind of cool. Okay, so I made a puzzle room here. This one, yeah, this one has no damage, nice. Okay, so. This is pretty neat. I'm in this safe zone in the puzzle room. So it would be pretty cool if I, um, if I take the next step here and make it so that the atmosphere sprite that's above everything shows really like at least kind of orange, like put an orange glow on top of this whole fire dungeon just to make it look like each room, like each room needs to have some fire on top of it or not. I think I'd, I want to make this so the player doesn't use the shield somehow. Or maybe he does, I don't know. It's kind of cool. That was pretty neat. I just ran it in there. That was That's usually a pretty GPU intensive room. And I optimized the fog in the background this morning and yeah, my computer, I can tell, is not working as hard as it used to to draw that room and do live streaming. So definitely did something there with the optimization this morning. Yeah, so the atmosphere. Wait, let me put a breakpoint here because this is how I'm tracking things in Xcode lately. I just set freaking breakpoints to remember where where I was in the code. It's like seventy thousand lines of code now, and I get into like a little mini project and set a bunch of breakpoints because Xcode's tab system is not like any other tab system. It's not very intuitive actually. If I if I the second I change this one's file, most editors would put up another tab. So it's really confusing to try and use Xcode. You either have to do this quick open thing all the time, and that takes a lot of time, or 
some other way to manage all the, the last locations of where you were in the code. I wish there was a smarter freaking IDE. I wish there was just a super duper smart IDE that remembered all of like the last five places I was in the code as well as data, text files or whatever kind of data files. I wish it could remember places like that too. I guess I, maybe I should switch to like TextMate or something just to use some other kind of text editor other than Xcode. But Xcode's sweet with its autocomplete, so it's catch 22. Okay, so let's do brighter atmosphere. Command control left right. I think I might have already. I think I already rebound rebound those. Yeah, I think I already did. What's that supposed to do? Visual Studio. How about an IDE that writes code for you? Or the nav menu? Jump to previous which one? Location? You mean go back? I don't see that one. Am I just like blind? Versus colors, edited, save lines, that's simple. Placeholder? That is, what is that? Oh my god, maybe this is exactly what I've been trying to do. Placeholder. Okay, so how do I put down a placeholder? Oh my god, maybe Xcode does have this feature. Uh, I'm looking this up right now. Oh yeah, go back. So the go back, go forward. Yeah, I use that all the time. But like, um, the problem with go back, go forward is if you go back a few times and then you open a new, you want to. Oh, whoops! I need a new file. You've broken the whole chain of your back forward. You know. Oh, vs. Uh, oh, Visual Studio. I know. Right, so where, how do you set a bookmark or a placeholder? Oh, here, how to add the placeholder what? No, not the window. Oh, this is about adding snippets. Yeah, I know exactly. I'm trying to I'm trying to work within this system too and like just find a better way to for my workflow cuz like constantly doing this to like quick open to open up files that that's kind of fast but it's tedious, you know, like I wish I just remembered the last 5 places I was really smartly. Oh yeah, okay, placeholders are for snippets. Okay. One sec, my, my stove's beeping at me. All right, all right. So I'll just work on the atmosphere. Forget about tabs. 
<laughs> it is kind of tempting. I must admit, I must admit, I'm actually tempted to use Visual Studio more. But like Windows just kind of gets to me. It's And I used to not. I used to be a Windows user. Boss idea for the fire dungeon. A stove? <laughs> but there are bookmarks or something? Really? Ah. Uh. Huh. Bookmarking. I didn't even know there was an Xcode documentation. Add bookmarks in the document organizer. I think this is for documentation. Yeah, this is for when you're browsing documentation. Mm. There's no... Bookmarking documents, is that it? Yeah, this is the same thing. Documentation. The assistant, okay, let me check that out. Let me check that out. The assistant editor, wasn't that the one where it opens up a, I mean this thing? Is this the assistant editor? Wait, view assistant editor. Yeah, the thing this is, right? Oh no, right. Yeah, this is the the counterpart thing. So, what do you what do you normally do, Steve? How do you do it? Like you put up a second window like this, the assistant view, and then you do counterparts or do you do like what do we got here? Super classes. Maybe just nothing. Maybe I'll have two files open all the time and then I'll have like some data yeah this is good to play with let me i'll play with this on today's stream i'll add i'll leave this open the whole time i think i want to set it to manual at first yeah so i can at least have two views i don't need to have so many breakpoints okay this this could work oh and you can do it in the quick oh so if i hold option before Oh, I mapped, I remapped my, my quick open. So I, it must not be remapped right for me. Oh, but that's cool. That's a good way to think of it, right? So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm opening stuff, I can quickly open it in the external or in this guy. I'll just remap that right now. That was, um, open quickly. Is that file? Yeah. Where's where's open quickly in another in the assistant editor? There's also quick to counterpart, which is nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This, no, this is cool. Really, I need I need to do something about this because like. It slows me down when I'm trying to make this game, trying to make a dungeon today, you know? It slows me down when I've got, you know, five to seven diff to different, like, places where I've been editing, and it just, using back and forward always gets messed up. Mm. Anyways, yeah, I'll figure that out later. Okay. But at least I can have two things manually open. All right, so this is somewhere where I'm creating atmosphere. Yeah, well, I don't know if it if as long as it doesn't bother anybody watching the stream to see two code windows open, it's fine with me. Create atmosphere. Whoops. Oh yeah, okay, we got this atmosphere is 4862. I think this is the, the opacity here. Oh no, wait. <sighs> opacity, yeah, yeah, those are opacity ranges. 
Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I'm, I would love to find a little a little workflow method that could, that could help me speed things up or smooth things out, you know, speed things like smoothing things out would be kind of the thing that I think would would subsequently speed things up. Just less friction. Like what John what what Jonathan Blow always talks about, less friction in game development. Little little shit like this that slows you down every day all the time, you know? I just want less friction in my in my game development. So this is 48 to 62 the atmosphere all right, so if we have, let's make it, let's make a float. Float opacity equals um, constant damage, right? Speed, speed is the side effect. Constant damage, anything then we're going to use an opacity of 1.5 otherwise it's 1.0 this is like an opacity factor there we go okay so that should make the well, let's make it 2.0 to make it really obvious so there, now, I mean, if you can't figure out exit, you always try notepad minus minus, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I can't believe I don't have that on my Windows, on my Windows partition, man. I don't use that Windows partition enough. I need to go get notepad minus minus tonight. What's up, s -Bob, man? Thanks, man, thanks for saying that. Okay, so I'm t I'm constantly taking damage in this room. And this room I should not be taking as much damage. But now it doesn't look it doesn't look um it's not enough yet. Let's do 4.0 there. And when it creates some atmosphere Oh, uh, like this one, this would have been a nice one to open up in the side view here. Atmosphere. Oh, man. If I try and open the quick oh oh yeah, so uh All right, so it does a start opacity and an end opacity for the whole thing. And then it just fades between the two opacities. Oh, but here's what I wanted to do. Opacity zero equals clamp I to make sure this gets clamped. There. So we need to get some doors for the and doors and walls soon. This dungeon needs some walls. But I wanted I want this atmosphere to be really um really obvious so we can tell really at a glance that this is a hot room. And then later I'll do some kind of shader, like some kind of cool shader would be nice. Yeah, this isn't enough yet. In fact, I want this whole thing to be taller. Hmm. 
Hmm, so how would I open... How would I... Area CPP? Now, I mean, NMs... Well, this is hard to quick open. You can't quick open anything. I'm not used to doing this slow open. I really need that quick open. Man, how do you do the open quickly? Is that is that hard? Wait. I wonder if that's hard. Oh, is it shift? No. Ah. Where the hell? Components, systems, generator, game. Here we go. Game. Anims. Atmosphere. All right, we got it open. I don't know how to. I don't know how to bind. I don't know. I have no idea how to rebind the quick open with into the assistant editor okay so I want an option in this method that is the size or the scale okay cool done we need a scale option. Atmosphere. We'll do flow rotation. No. Uh, flow scale first. And then this will be. Or that's scale Y. Let's be explicit. Scale Y. Or I can do a VEC2 scale. Yeah, I'll do a VEC2 scale. All right, cool. Scale. We got scale being set, and everywhere we call atmosphere is just the three, these three places here. It's gonna need this is the vector, the position, and the scale. So this is scale 1.0, 0 0.5. All these are 1.0, 0 0.5. except if there is if you're doing constant damage I know they are aren't they Dr. Rasm it's true if you want to make it obvious it's a hard room just make rocks for daisy combust <laughs> done I know it's not even that's not even the worst. No way, yeah, it is actually. I think that is the worst. Area dot cpp is huge. But yeah, I mean, what what am I gonna do? Spend all my time refactoring code to make it all fit better, or am I gonna finish this game? You know, that's like that's my choice, right? As a developer, yeah, this sucks that I have put five thousand lines of code in the same file. But for me to go put things in the right places is gonna take time that I don't have. So, at least it's a good system. The component-based system, the gears, you know, the, the ECS.
has kept me on track for most of it. So this one's going to have a scale of 1.0, 1.0. Uh, and I just thought that actually this start opacity, end opacity probably needs to be another vector or something. Yeah, it's still not looking hot enough in here. It's like, oh, because I did it wrong, I did it backwards. Dude, what is taking so long? What's up with my computer? All of a sudden, it said full. Full CPU. Lava. We need lava. Lava is going to come in there. I'm, it's definitely going to be a good thing to have some lava. Oh, Xcode's the one killing it today. 150% of CPU. And staying that way. Wait, 100? Are you calming down, Xcode? Are you going to be a bitch? Oh, you're calming down. All right. Okay, I believe you. Believe you now. The, the level was so hot it made my laptop hot. <laughs> right? Yeah, pretty code doesn't make money. Yeah, at least I can now. At least, yeah. Except when I'm in an area at CPP, I can't navigate it that well. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go to this part of the area at CPP, that part of the area at CPP. It is. It's a double pain. It must be the double pain. <laughs> okay, now it's a little bit better, but still we got this gradi gradient. The gradient is going from a max opacity down to a min opacity, so we need another... So this opacity is the overall opacity, and then we've also got a gradient opacity. All right, you ready, Xcode? You wanna you wanna recompile everything again? Sounds good, huh? This is going to be the gradient opacity. This is a long ass function. And this is going to go from gradient opacity zero, gradient opacity one, and now we need to pass it. These two at the bottom here are going to stay how they are. Going from 255 to 0. This one though is if you have constant damage then it only goes down to like 128 or something. Otherwise 0. What's up PMC? Welcome, welcome, welcome man. 
My stove's beeping at me again. One sec. How you doing, PMC? What's new? Wait, what are you excited about from E3, by the way? <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna chill and wait for this thing to process because i think this is what took up all the cpu last time within its indexing xcode is, is just really killing it in a bad way Right, and that's the thing about um, about Coco's 2DX. So many small files. So every time it has to re-index, it's like, oh, let me just go reprocess all those like 900 source files that Coco's 2DX has. You know, it would be it would be kind of cool to have a version of Coco's 2DX that was just minimal, or at least a at least a CP, at least like a a define where you could define like I want. The lean and mean version of Coco's 2DX, where all you, all you want is like sprites. You know, all I want are some freaking sprites and and like the shaders and like the file system. That's it. That's all I want. I want the minimal version. I edited, exited for the new Xbox Scorpio. EA is opening a publishing arm. Whoa. Mountain Blade 2. Ah. You have, Steve? Oh my god, that would be pretty cool. Really? I know, right? Version 5 fork? Right? Hey, my, my question is, would it be simple and easy to make, like... Like, would all, all would we, would we have to do is just, like, cut stuff out, you know, like... Or wrap some things in Define so they just don't get, like, included, or... You know, would it be simple and easy, or, like... I don't know. Okay, something happened to the gradients here. I messed up the gradients. I know, yeah, too much on the mobile, yeah. Yeah, they got a freaking awesome thing with the, the desktop version of Coco City X. And I mean, it's still it's still pretty rad that you can you can, you know, publish for mobile still with Coco City X. So it's definitely a keeper feature, but it's like you don't need all the. The things that they're it's all the all the stuff they throw in. Personally, I don't even need the three D part. That's the that's what I would throw out first. Is like, okay, we don't need three D. But I guess maybe some people would want that, but I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It might just be easier just to actually cut stuff, huh? But what I'm wondering is is there a, is there a simple way to set set it up so that like, if Coco 2DX does come out with a new version, that all you would have to do is apply either a, like a simple script or something like that that would just cut out all the stuff you don't need really quick, you know? And you'd kind of have a, a mock-up new version of this, you know, minified engine or whatever. But still, it's it can kind of stay in sync with Coco 2DX in case they do release some cool features or, or not features, but you know, some important fixes to the existing stuff or speed ups to the existing stuff. I don't know. You might be right. It might just be easier to actually rewrite everything. <laughs> ah! Uh, 
I wish there was a game engine that was designed with me in mind. I just want a simple ass game engine. All I need is sprites and shaders. Okay, so what did I do wrong with this constant damage thing? 255. Hey, wait. Let's set a breakpoint here. I was thinking forking it. Replace render command system with, uh huh, with BGFX, but wrap with the existing API as the first text. Oh. Right? If you want that, you should write one yourself. Yeah, you guys are both saying that. Same with Dr. Rasm. Wait, what's what's BGFX? Oh, whoa, this looks pretty nice. Cross-platform, API agnostic. Bring your own engine. That's all, that's what... BYOE, I like that. Wow. So it supports direct 3D. Metal, nice. What about Vulcan? No Vulcan? Is Vul wait, no, Metal is Apple's thing. Vulcan is like the OpenGL thing, right? So it doesn't support OpenGL 4 yet. But OpenGL 4 is a lot different, right? Look at this, Android, FreeBSD, iOS, this is cool. Oh, and it supports all these languages, wow. Dude, Steve, this is awesome. I never knew this was out there. But I hear you, I hear you on taking something like this and then making the API kind of like Coco City X. Uh-huh. And the action system, yeah, the action system's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. So let me see some code. This all looks good. But I want to see some code to see if they're coding good. Heh. You guys coding this good? Hmm. Heh. Amalgamated build. Is this a Unity build thing? Yeah, this is... They, look, they got a Unity build. Um, BGFX. I just want to see their, their code style. C++. Geo context. You're like virtual functions. Hmm. Cool. So this is it, huh? There's only this many for source files. I'm liking the looks of this. There's only so there's only, there's only so many files here. That's the part that's really nice to me. Because with Coco's 2DX, man, there are so many. How many how many files are there actually? Nine hundred maybe. Kind of waiting one on next year if the new language is fleshed out. Yeah, Swift, Rust, Jai, totally. 
Yeah, if Jai if Jai was out and had some shit. If Jai was out, I might even write my own engine with it. Yeah, we're all we are all interested in Jai, huh? Dang. Can't wait for that. Come on, Jonathan Blow. Give us the best language ever. Mm hmm. Ah, nice. Story mode of FIFA. Okay, if this is right, 255 down to 128. All right. What went wrong? What went wrong? What if this was just 255, or wait, this was zero, that zero, 255, zero. When Jack comes out, you should run an engine that runs entirely in the compiler. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. What Sal Dongs is talking about uh, with Jai, if anybody's you know curious about that, he didn't really know. Jai's got this feature where um, uh, basically it can run code at compile time. There, I said it. It can run code at compile time. That's really all there is to it. I mess I mess something up big time. It's either the angle or it was recent with this start opacity thing. I think. up the corner corner um gradients what did I do what did I do okay so before these quarter gradients Oh, I put these, oh, just put those in the wrong order. Should I start off a test for it? Give me some reason. I don't know, man. It's up to you. It's totally up to you. I would check it out right now for sure, but I don't know if I would have time to really contribute to it, to tell you the, the honest truth. This game is taking all of my time, and I'm working as fast as I can to get the release out this year. Will your next game use Cocos or another engine, maybe in a custom engine? That's what we were just talking about. We're talking about uh, either, you know, um, minimizing Cocos 2DX so it's not as, as feature bloated, or um, using something like BGFX with a little bit of like Cocos 2DX flavored API, or, you know, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. I'm definitely interested in Jai, in Jai for sure, no matter what um, what engine I'm using next time, or writing my own engine, or whatever, I don't know. I probably will not write my own engine. 
with things like BGFX out there, it's like, why would you, you know, and you know, I guess, I guess the reason I would is just to have the awesomest engine ever, but yeah, so I would definitely take a peek. I definitely would take a peek, man. Yeah. Steve Tranby. Oh, that'd be so cool to see if you did. I definitely I definitely would be so interested in seeing it. That's for sure. You would have me at Pragma once. If I saw Pragma once at the top, I'd be like, oh my god, this is my favorite engine ever. Uh-huh. Yeah, it may, it may. It may. But it might be the nice it might be a nice inspiration or something like that. Or like you know, like a basis for something. I think it's working now. So I set this here to 128 now. We should have a constant gradient for the whole screen. Pragma twice. <laughs> Pragma twice. <laughs> I don't even know what that would do. Does that mean that every file could be included twice? Why not? Let's let them in twice. Oh, this gradient. Oh, the position. Position Y. Okay, so this is a constant damage. Man, this is getting really... Here, there needs to be two of these calls. Using include cards. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I just don't like include cards. What's up, Space? My name. It's going good, man. Working on this fire dungeon here where you get take constant damage. Oh, right. Yeah. That's cool. I like Unity builds too. I have uh, I have, some of my code is Unity, sort of quasi Unity builded. Like kit.cpp, for example, compiles a bunch of things into one. I used to have everything in Songbringer as as a Unity build, but it wasn't quite as flexible. You know, when I when I recompile one thing or when I change one header file, I change everything. You know. Oh, what Xcode? Can't you build your own templates though, or snippets or whatever? Wasn't that what that thing we was looking at there a second ago in the documentation anyway? Constant damage, size the whole screen, position zero, um, bottom gradient 128, opacity factor, this is times four, so we'll put this at mm, 128 and this to like 255. We don't need this opacity factor anymore, blend funk additive. And this one is half the screen, like that scale. Constant damage, zero. No need for opacity factor. There, it's a lot simpler. Okay, I was getting no tedious doing it that way. Oh, you're talking about the templates that Xcode uses for generating new header files. Oh. Oh, so yeah, you, you use like command new to make a new header file and all that? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can edit them. See there, you have no excuse anymore. You can edit them. No excuse at all. Okay, it is kind of looking hot in here, huh? The scale needs to be a tiny bit bigger, though, on the Y, so that we have... Mm, wait, which one's... I think this one's scale. Oh, but they get overridden every time Xcode updates? Oh, no wonder. That's BS. Yes. Oh, shell script, yeah. Shell script would, would. Sounds like the thing. Okay, yeah, it's definitely looking hot in here. But now, if I go to this room. Right? 
right? This is the this is the respite. Here's where you had take no damage all the time. But if I go back into this room, oh, this whole dungeon's all messed up. Whoa, that was weird. The pillar was jumping back and forth. Spooky's starting to sweat. What's up, Michael Sena? Okay, this is cool. This is cool. This could do something like this. Something like this. This just shows basically this is really hot. And I'll combine this with some kind of shader at some point, so... Actually, it, may, it might need a little less opacity when it goes to the top of its, of its height or whatever. So it goes from like 128 to 164, 192 maybe. Oh, you know what? Let's do the item. Why is he trying to teleport? The, the you mean the block? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it definitely this definitely gives me the impression that there's some sort of heat in here that's, that's just damaging the player all the time. It would be pretty nice um, if if the player couldn't use the shield to block this kind of damage. Oh wow, that's his shield. Yeah, that's the shield. He's using the shield all the time because he's constantly taking damage, but the shield is taking some of that damage. So that's what that is. Okay, <clears throat> so let's make it so you ca you can't take damage. You can't use your shield to block that kind of damage. <laughs> so we just get a little heated. <laughs> so I'm gonna try something kind of um. This is kind of risky here to try doing this way, but. I know that when I call change HP from the level, I'm using a changer ead of zero. And I know that whenever an entity damages another entity, like a, a f an enemy hurts the player or the hero or whatever, um, it uses the proper ead for that. So I could try um, not applying any shield if the changer ead is zero. But I'm not sure what else that will actually... Oh, here it is. Use shield HP. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice line. I'm, I'm so into creating all these lines right now, little tiny lines of, of dialogue. Show what it's like from his perspective and from Jim's perspective. That's better. Now he's not using the shield. Oh, when I get all the way over on this side of the screen, you can see the edge of the. Oh, same there. Okay, so we need a 1.1 there. <laughs> Don't want to get burned. We can come up with jokes all day for about this. <laughs> Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> yeah, anchor man. That's better. This is actually pretty cool. At first, I was like, I don't know. If, I don't know about this knockback. But the knockback is makes it like your controls really like whoa whoa whoa. Oh, we need a tiny bit of alteration to the position, or maybe a little more of these 1.2, 1.2. Uh. 
try. Oh, this is a good idea. Try the sword. Yes, <laughs> that's a pretty good line. I like. I'm a, in a glass cage of emotion. It definitely messes you up trying to like swing the sword like that because you're just getting knocked back all the time. And it looks, it looks like I'm getting constantly knocked back to the east as well. There he goes! He goes down! Okay, so let's fix it now so he does he's not getting knocked back to the east every time. And maybe the knockback should be a little bit less too. Hey, what's up, Codex? Sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing your name right. Um, how many lines is it now? We just did this. I think it's about sixty-five thousand. Yeah, sixty-five thousand lines. I've constantly been like, oh, I hope it doesn't get to be any longer, but, you know, there's still content to be created. <laughs> a million, a million lines of code would be so much. Has anybody, has anybody in the chat actually worked on a project that has a million lines of code? Like, at a company or whatever? Oh, it is Codex? Oh, oh, wow. It's amazing. Amazing that I actually said it right. That's what I'm saying. I deserve like a gold star for that one. Put that on the put that on the gold star board. <laughs> okay, so let's make it so when you get hit, there's a knockback, and the knockback is random if there's no source. Your highest was 41. All right. Yeah, right. What's what has anybody ever seen a has anybody ever even seen a project with a million lines of code? Really? Oh man, I definitely deserve a reward for that. First streamer to say your name right. Kotix Blue. No thanks. <laughs> Where is the knockback? This is the shield knockback. Here, yeah, here's the regular knockback. So it's source.x or y. Oh, it's an invalid position. All right, so we'll do v3f source. Ah, uh, no, I guess we'll just do auto source is changer dot position dot empty. We're gonna make a random vector. Otherwise, we got changer position pause. So the random vector is gonna be e position dot pause plus v3f uh, drandf times mm, 1.0 and drandf times 1.0 you got one one and a half million and so you just typed it in the whole time whoa yeah you remember being here ages ago yeah yeah it's definitely progressed a lot hasn't it yeah Game to the game is surprising me at how much has progressed. Probably because I'm good at smoking weed and then and then sitting back after after a week's worth of development, I'll go and smoke a bowl and play the game. And it surprises me. I'm like, whoa, I forgot about that. Or or goddamn, I can't believe that this world turned out like that. You know, that it put this here or whatever. 
Hey, yeah, there we go. Now I'm getting knocked back in random directions. That's great. I wanted to see that. But I want to be, let's get, let's make it so he doesn't quite get knocked back as far. Coco Studio probably has a million lines of just comments. Yeah, I know, right? How, how much? Hey, what's up, Tom Nook? How, wait, that's a, that's a pretty curious thing, right? How many lines of code does Coco Studio X have? I bet I could figure this out real quick. Mate, let me show my W E S W C. There, it's just that. Oh, this needs to be a fine method. Ah. Is there some way I could expand all of the fo I don't quite know how to do a find. If I were to do a find, if I were to find an all file, you know, a find command, and then pipe it into this WC, I could get a total for every single file, but it wouldn't give me a total for all files. Google has two billion lines of code in their in all of their code. God damn. That's crazy. Two billion? Do they need them all? Do they need all those lines of code? Are they using include guards? They don't need those include guards. They need to take out those include guards. That's my, I'm putting my foot down on this. Your game has one line of code. Because <laughs> screw coding conventions. <laughs> so dope. That's so dope. I want to see a game with one line of code. I know it can be done. Minify it. <laughs> Everyone add just one more line of code and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, good question. Speed, big, small. Hmm. One more thing. If the changer Ian is zero, then we'll do another half factor. Mm hmm no new lines. Oh, that's a good question. What does, what do you actually call a line of code? Does it, is it a new line or is it some, or is it like, Nice, this is good. But wait, he's still, I think he's still only going to the east. Come on. Oh no, there he went to the west that time. No, it really looks like it's almost always east though, that's weird. Weird, man. Yep, that's D rand F. That's that's positive and negative. Maybe I should multiply it by a little bit though. Make that position a little more obvious. Yeah, I just did. I wrote this code to make it random, and then it wasn't random, right? Why? I was like, why is that? This doesn't make sense. That's the thing about random systems, right? They're not. 
especially random deterministics, is this is a random deterministic random number generator, so that means it's always generating the same random numbers, depending on the world scene. Okay, that's really confusing. I gotta try, I gotta see this. Yeah, see this actually when it calls this knockback. If you roll dice hundred times, you'll have a number that's way more common, right? And I'm sure there's some mathematical probability for all that. Open source, yeah, open source means that your your source code is available. It, it doesn't mean that it can be taken, though. Open source, you can protect your source code still um, with licenses, and um, and still it can be open source. And mods, mods, mods don't, mods sometimes use source code, but they, a lot of times they just don't even use source code. You can just modify a game by not mo but not modify its source code the current time yeah i think i'm thinking it's just the math i'm thinking something's wrong with the math here or something so i'm stepping into this method knockback here to figure out that so the source for this Knockback is 211.34. That's about halfway through this. Well, let's see how it compares to the the entity's position. This is going to be the player. So the player is at 210.30. This is the first time they're getting hit with the knockback. And we're, we got the knockback source at 211.34. That's going to be to the east. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's see that again. Uh. So will Songbringer be open source? No, it won't be open source, but parts of it are and have always been open source. I use an open source game engine, first of all, but I've also published uh, pieces of Songbringer on my GitHub. So there's part of it is open source, but no, you won't be able to ever get the whole source code for Songbringer and like recompile it yourself. If you're working with a developer from across the world, would you recommend getting them to sign an NDA? I guess it depends on the developer and your situation and how much you trust them. Perhaps make a rule saying max five knockbacks in one direction and then it forces to another direction for a while. Oh, trust me, this this random number, it's not it's not the random number generator. It's something I'm doing with the math. Uh, this'll this will get working a lot more random here in a second once I fix this. No, <laughs> or just don't work with the developer from across the world. iTunes shuffle isn't random, really? Like, is it, per, is it deliberately n not random? So this time it's 2.14.30. That's, oh, that's the player. The player's at 2.14.30 now, and they're getting hit with from 2.09. Wait a minute. Oh, I forgot the knockback. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I'm telling you is the math. And yeah, there's some math I put in here so that um, yeah, inside this knockback code, this math, it's, it's, it's wanting to not ever knock back um, towards the player
basically when you're when you're using the top hat the top hat flies back towards you and it used to cause a lot of enemies to get knocked into you because the top hat was always coming back in your direction so i had to kind of modify the physics a little bit so that there's another vector that it considers which is the 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 vector from that thing that's getting hit and its parent Ah, and if it doesn't have a parent, yeah, so this is, duh, okay, check this out, this is about to be fixed, um, if, I don't think we're going to need V3 for most of these kind of cases, so if, yeah, V3 is only applied there, there, and there. All right, so let's separate out this V3 code. As long as it's not dependent on something else. Oops, yeah, that's all on the line now, cool. So V3 is not dependent on V2. Okay, so this can kind of be ifed out. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was random, but people complained that it didn't feel random, so they made it artificial randomness. Oh my god, that's funny. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it is kind of halfway open source. Have you added any code off stream in not time to rewatch from day one and code everything? Yeah, I've added code a lot of code that has not been on stream. I work for a good eight to 10 hours a day. I stream for about two hours a day. So you do the math. There's like, you know, six to eight hours a day there of coding that I haven't showed. But you might see it again the next day. You, I might be like working on a piece of code and it's better by the next day anyways. So that's, that's kind of hard because it changes all the time. Oh, Jonah was already saying that. <laughs> Sorry, I need to read all the chat messages before I reply. People expect randomness to look a certain way. When reality, this randomness is just unpredictable. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's a crazy way to look at it. That sequence is the same as that one. Oh. Oh, so now it purposely chooses other types of songs to make it seem random. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Man, this should have been in here the whole time. If the parent id is greater than zero, then we can use this third vector thing. Oh, and this v2 times a half here, this is also... And this we don't need if we just put it in there. There we go. Okay, that's how it should look. So we start off with V2, which is the vector from um, the source of the, from the entity to the source of the, 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 the damage. And then that gets normalized. It's ready to use for V if necessary. And if we have parent E is greater than zero, then we compute this third vector based on the parent normalize it, have both vectors, add them together, normalize it again. Okay, that looks a lot better than the old code. And now, if this is working, if this, do, if this does what I think it does, it should make it so that it's random how you get knocked back. Yeah? You got an insanely huge Spotify playlist. Yes, look at that, he's going to the west. Going to the north, to the east, check it out. We got some proper randomness going on with that. Alright, this is so cool. So imagine you're a speedrunner playing through Songbringer and you want to skip parts of the world 
for you to skip the whole world, you would have to not get this certain item that protects you from this fire damage. So let's do this now. I'm gonna make the, the fire damage item. So, so this, this item is gonna protect you from fire damage. Your tinfoil hat might be a bit thick. Uh, what was that movie with where they actually wore tinfoil hats? You have OCD, but when it comes to music, you hate listening to music out of order. <laughs> really? It's for me. It's the same way. If it's a if it's a, like a really nice, I um, or if it's a really awesome album that's kind of meant to be played. Ice cube. You mean it's the ice cube item? Something like that. Something like that. Let's, okay, I'm adding these items right now. Actually, should I check in what I did so far? I'll, I'll check it in all in later. Okay, so I'm adding an item. Five items. I'm actually going to add five items here. All these are different items which protect you from different types of damage. But I think at first I'm really only going to focus on this fire item protection. Blink, blink, ghost, chip, meditate. Okay, item fire, armor. Ice armor, lightning armor, poison armor, fear armor. Something like that. <laughs> it's it's a problem, right? Then your playlist just gets huge. It is, it's too easy. Fire armor, ice. I was afraid of deleting songs. Hmm. By the way, did you make all elements available to the game? Yeah, yeah. Every world that you're in, you can always find all five elements. They're there. They're, some of them are really hidden though. Is that what you meant? Yeah, before yeah, before it was only like three out of five of of them were available, but yeah, they're there. All five are there, and you can craft all five now too because you got jib that can be crafted into the jib. Jib can become a weapon. Jib gets a weapon, and jib can use his weapon by pressing a button if you're the player. If you're player two. Poison armor, fear armor. Mm. 
Okay, we got all these items hooked up. Um, I should add them into, I should make some sprites for them here in the HUD. <laughs> yeah, you can craft all of them. You've always, yeah, you've always been able to craft all these items and stuff, but now you can craft Jib. Jib has this shield item where he like, he like blocks enemies and stuff or knocks them back. And then you can craft his shield item with a, an element and make him a wet into a weapon. So when Jib blocks somebody or, or like pushes them back, it, he also puts fire on them or ice or lightning or whatever. They're so expensive though. Not if you find some good secrets or finish a few dungeons, you can get up to 255 pretty fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you're. I bet you you're saving up though. I bet you when you actually go to play, you'll be like, "Oh my god, this is this is a lot different. A lot has has improved." Okay. Um. Let me copy. I'm just gonna make them all this fire orb for now. Whoops. Okay, we got fire armor, ice armor. Lightning armor. All right. Do do do. Do do do. Lighting armor. Acid armor. <laughs> it's you right. It's two twenty, but I gotta keep watching Twitch. Go, I'm, I'm a Twitch, I'm a Twitch, Twitch addict. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Oh, the potion seller video on on YouTube. Wait, what's that? I haven't seen that one. Send me links. I must know of this meme. I'm a meme addict. Uh, uh, give me new memes. Uh. Okay, cool. We got all these na named? No. Gotta name all these. Item fire armor. Nice. Nice. Hey, check this out. Somebody told me to make a bookmark to the Twitch chat. Look at this. I actually made a bookmark to the Twitch chat. It's pretty nice. Potion seller, is this good? I guess this is awesome. Can't wait to watch it. Ooh, remastered version? What? There's a remaster? Yeah, it was Boogie's idea. Yep. Boogie has all the good ideas. All of them come from Boogie. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's I can imagine there's a there's a lot of things that would probably work pretty well to put some fun, like to put funny elements in to the game. Cause there's such a huge culture for the Zelda world already. You know, it's 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 and it's so easy for this game to like either 
you know, make a joke that's a reference to Zelda or something like that, you know? Oh yeah, item fire, okay, that's named right, cool. Item fire armor, ice armor, Okay, so now these images are all hooked up. I can go and draw some and make it look cool and stuff, but I haven't decided on what these items should be even be yet, so I don't know what to make them look like. So but I can at least export this document. All right, Michael Santa, man. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> all right, man. Cheers. Have a good one. All user slices, so important. Oh no, don't put it there. Oh, Shazbot. Oh, just put so many files in the wrong place. Damn. At least they mostly start with the word HUD or item. Yes, yes, Kotix, I've, I make all the pixel art and I do all the music and the sound and all the code. Can't wait to watch this video. Bomb container. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. And this. There. Back to clean. Yeah, it's pretty rewarding too. It's really rewarding to, um, for me it's really rewarding to not have any kind of red tape whatsoever. You know, if I want to make a game about taking eating cactuses and tripping out on psychedelic substances in space with swords and and mystical chi powers, I can. And so I am. And that, that part is really, really, really rewarding to be your own developer that does all those things yourself. If I had a partner or whatever in this process, I would have to consider things like, oh, hey, partner. Um, is it cool if I add some, some cactus eating that trips you out and is basically a reference to drugs? And you know, that partner might say, yes, that's the dopest thing ever. Or that partner might say, no, that's the worst idea ever. And <laughs> Jonah wants the oranges. Okay. How can I bring the oranges back? What should, what should I make an item for this? Right? This was originally your health was, was vitamin C. It was meant to keep is to keep you keep you from from the fear taking over. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the right place now. Yes, the HUD folder. It's a temporary item you throw at enemies. All right. Yeah, not relying on anyone else. No, but especially the no red tape part. It's like, it's so, I don't know. It's when you have, when you have two or more people working on a project, you tend to have, it depends on what kind of personality type you are, you know? And I'm a kind of personality type that loves doing my own ideas and things in my head and not worrying about, you know, I guess I, I guess I, I'm a creative control freak. That's basically how to say it. I need to have creative control of the project. So if I'm working with someone that also is the kind of person that wants creative control of a project, that's going to be a bad thing. And then also, um, that's a you know, it's a, it would also be a good thing if I were working with people that weren't, you know, creative control freaks, because then then I could be the creative control freak and we would work in harmony. 
So, but anyways. And then there's some creative relationships where you, there, there's multiple creative control freaks and they end up creating the best things ever in the entire world. Like, I'm sure a lot of bands are like that. Okay, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, right, the new item. Okay, so we need to be able to have this item in here, and possess it and all that, so I should save the game. We can temporarily give it to the player. So, where did it save it? Here we go, fear, fire armor. So let's say I have, let's have some fire armor now. And I'll probably need to hook up some text. Item, here we go. Well, if you hire someone to work on it with you, then you're the boss, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would love to do that for the next game. I would love to hire somebody, especially, especially I'm thinking of a programmer, a good programmer. Because programming takes the most time of anything. You know, making art and music and all that is is like a quarter of the project. And like code is three quarters of the project. Unless you're putting it in, yeah, marketing should be one thing. So it's more like art and music is a fifth or two fifths. Marketing is a fifth. And then like coding is like three fifths. Oh, right. IRL is definitely different than overseas or at a distance. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jonah. Right? Yeah. I'm a lone wolf, too. Hi, baby. Uh, it's based on my name. I was saying for the next project, if I if this if Songbringer succeeds, I would I would consider hiring a programmer if they're the right kind of person. Uh, because that part is so time consuming. Ice armor, lightning armor. Poison, fear armor. So I'm just naming these at first. I'm not even going to describe them yet because I'm not sure what they should be. I'm thinking of like a pendant or a locket or something very small. It just magically protects you. But that doesn't make as much sense, so I don't know. Space is hinting? What? Yeah, if I, right. Finding the right person would be amazing. Yeah. Somebody that's not too much of a creative control freak, but still an awesome programmer. That's kind of who I would look for. And I would also consider hiring an animator as well, an artist. Because art just takes a lot of time too. And I would love to be able to do like half of the art and then have somebody else finish the other half. Like here, here's five frames of this animation. Make it into 15 frames and make it look super awesome. That would be sweet. Oh, so I'm still taking damage. And the fire armor is not showing up. Oh, there it is. The image didn't load. Yeah? You'd be down? Nice. I know, right? I know. In my weird world of halves. I think of it weird. I think of it like it is half if you think of it logarithmically somehow, right? If it's like half of some, I don't know. <laughs> There's got to be a way I'm right, I'm sure. Yeah, it can be hard. I've tried hiring people for other other endeavors in the past, and it was probably the hardest thing I ever tried to do, was hire a good person. It's 
So why didn't that load? Did it not freak? Maybe it just didn't pack the texture. It's half if you like being wrong. Yeah, uh, I think it's recompiling. Yeah, it just didn't compile it. All right. Um, okay, now let's make it so when you when you possess this fire armor item, you don't take this damage all the time. So I think I actually set a breakpoint for that earlier. Yeah. We already did this part about not using the shield. Okay, so if... Constant damage and K filter fire. So if this is if this type of damage is fire, and the player has K item fire armor. Oh, and the player does not have fire armor. Wait. Let's just do int damage equals zero. Okay, so if the damage type is, no, we'll do damage type is negative one. And then if the player has the armor, the damage becomes zero. And if the damage, well, I think it already checks for this in health system damage there. For me, the hardest part is finding an artist who is good, quick, and doesn't want 10k for some basic pixel art, right? <laughs> yeah. You want AAA card quality for free? You get a copy of the game? Uh-huh. They hired a developer and flew them out to live with them. Now they work side to side. They get so much done that way. Yeah. Yeah, working working in the same room is a really really good thing. I used to work at some uh, game development companies in the past, and it was always so fun. The camaraderie the camaraderie aspect of it all is, is awesome. Oh, nice! So, oh, check it out. So I have the fire armor, and I'm not taking constant damage. So this whole system's working. Mm. There should be a decent number of pixel artists who work for 15 to 30. Yeah. Mm. I know, right? It's really kind of rare that that would work out. That's so great that it worked out so well for him. Okay, so just to re just to reiterate this point here, just to make sure, if I take off the fire armor. Yeah, there you go. I love. That's what I'm doing too. I don't have to pay myself. I can improve my own art iteratively, day by day, and get better at doing art. Cool. All right. So let's let's also reiterate the point a little bit further. And if the player has ice armor, should still take damage. Yeah, it is. Still take a damage. All right, let's write the other types of damage in, even though we don't have any areas to test it with or anything. I'm just gonna. S set it up. So, so if we got the type ice and you have ice armor. Or it's lightning, you have lightning armor. Poison armor. Fear armor. I'm not even sure if all these items will even make it into the game. I'm sh I guess they could, and you just, they could at least be secret items somewhere. But I'm, sh I'm sure that fire and, and, uh, Poison are going to be, or acid basically, are going to be two of them. This is pretty interesting to have this all working though. 
How about if he has ice armor, it melts and he loses it? <laughs> you can never get it back. Oh, so if you if you have ice armor, but you go into this fire dungeon, you lose it. That's an interesting idea. I like I like concepts like that where you permanently change the whole game. The, the that game that save game for that player is good forever different. I like permanence. It's a it can, it's a it's an exciting concept. It, it thrills me to think about permanence because I'm like, oh shit, now I've lost that or or gained this forever or whatever. Good, good. Okay, so I'm constantly taking damage. If I go kill all these enemies, this room, we're okay. We're safe. It's so weird that thing is just like flickering back and forth when it moves. Take a damage again. Now if I give back the fire armor, it shouldn't take any damage. Fire armor melts through ice and if you fall to your death if you step on a spot too long. In the ice engine. Oh! Add infinite. So you just keep dying over and over? This is cool. I'm liking this. This is uh, the beginning of the fire dungeon. The fire dungeon, you just take damage the whole time from fire. Except for some rooms. But you need ice for the ice gates and secrets. Yo, yeah, totally. Yeah, you, you would never... So this these, these armor items are not craftable. So they come, they come that way. So the second you get the fire armor, it's already crafted. It's our, it's it, there's no crafting basically. It's just, it just always is the fire armor, and the same thing with the ice armor. So you're not using up an element to get one of these. You just find it complete that way. Oh, infinitely recurs down through all armor <laughs> and items. So, hey, let's see what this is like fighting a boss. Because I think I left the boss room, so it's also fiery. I have to use the... I really need to create doors so I don't get, keep getting stuck. Ooh. Entrance. Safe area. myself straight in the boss room so we can fight a boss with the fire armor and er, without the fire armor and see if I die what do you guys think should it be should it be so that should the should the boss room also be full of heat so for if you're speed running you're gonna need to you might need to find actually if you're a speed runner and you get through the boss room of a dungeon without the fire armor that's all fiery you'd be a badass so I'm pretty sure leave it like this it's the way to go yeah, you guys are saying yes. Yes, nice. It's probably why your hard drive is failing. Bot foo! Don't kill Boogie's hard drive. You can chill out more, Bot foo. Six, oh, oh, this is level five. Dungeon five. Um, where is the boss? No, I was right there! I was so close the whole time.
Take me to your leader. If the boss room isn't hot, then what's the point? Right? It's a good way to put it, Moogie. I love it. I love this whole damage taking the whole time. Yeah, I'm saving here. I'm cheating though, I'm starting with full health in the boss room, but let's see what it's like to fight this boss with full health, but not tons of full, not like, if I were actually playing the game, it wouldn't fight. This looks cool! With all this fieriness on top of the screen, it actually makes this guy kind of look all blared out. I died! The player disappeared when I died too, that was weird. Come on, I got I can do this, I can do this. You should get hit by this bomb. There you go. That was fun, wasn't it? Let's get hit by another bomb. Guys, hard to beat. Yes, he turned purple. Oh, he's just spawning those little guys. Don't die. Oh, I died before I could even pick up help. Yeah, new bosses. I'm working on a new boss tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm working on the fire dungeon boss. New old bosses can become new as many bosses in these effective dungeons, right? This adds a lot of dimension, a lot of possibilities. This guy's like impossible to beat in this allotted time, unless I just hit him with so many bombs at once. Hold on, let me give it. Uh, this is. I want to see if this works. <laughs> I'm, I'm captured by this challenge. I need bombs. How about some ice bombs? And some cactuses? Oh, uh, oh, what does the cactus do? Yeah, it's gonna be a higher dungeon. Yeah, seven to nine, maybe six. It's a, um, it'll be random too. Every world, it'll be a little bit different. What the hell, the bomb's not mapped? Somehow I unmapped the bombs. You're stuck on that boss? There's a trick to that boss. Yeah. Ooh, this is actually working pretty good. Hit him with the ice bomb. And he freezes for a second. protect me from the fire. It does? No, not anymore. Oh my god, I'm taking twice the damage. So what do you guys think? Is this, is it, am I taking too much damage here? Or should, I, should, the, should the timer, should the duration of time between each time you take damage be a little longer? Let's try it. I'll try it a little bit longer. Oh, you're still stuck? Oh man. I'm gonna take this up to maybe two seconds. What if the ice bomb cooled the explosion radius down for a few seconds and you don't lose health if you stay in that area? That's cool. That's definitely a rad idea. Yeah, it is too quick, huh? Yeah. Right, if you're trying to run through a whole dungeon, I had even some decent health there. I had half a, half a row of teeth there. So, yeah, let's do twice that. Twice that to start with. Got a page full of bugs I need to fix. 
Oh. Yeah. The ice bomb. Yeah, that would be sweet, right? A little protective area for a minute. How would I do that? I would have to I would have to draw it this whole screen a little bit differently. But if I were to do a custom shader, that would be pretty wouldn't be too bad. This guy just has so much help. Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, he merged back. Damn it. I thought I had him. So, okay, that just proved right there, though, that it is possible now to beat this guy. With this much health in the fire dungeon, taking damage the whole time. I almost had him there. If I had just done that a little bit better, I would have killed all three of those little purple guys in time. Dude, you know what would be really funny is if you fight a boss like this, you get him all the way down, and then you die right after you beat him. <laughs> that would be that would be the ultimate cosmic madness. The ice top hat would be really helpful here too. Actually, yeah, here. That would be a much more direct strategy. If you have the ice top hat and then hit him with bombs, but not the ice bombs here. Let me do some other bombs. Maybe if you had the fear bomb or something. Can you just put on a shirt? <laughs> oh, I, I know, it'd be so frustrating. bad example of somebody to try and beat in a short amount of time. Oh, there, oh! First back. Oh, you found a good strategy with the ice blink orb? Yeah, that would be a good one. Actually, man, that might be the thing to use here, too. That did help a lot to do a little less damage, so if I were to start back in that other room. Six oh where was that? Six oh five. You put down a bomb right when you blink, so it freezes the enemy and then lets the bomb hit it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, this is a little bit better, right? So I'm taking damage every two seconds. I'm taking one damage, and each tooth of health has four. So after four seconds, you lose a whole tooth. That's pretty good. I might need to even make it longer to be really playable. 
but I mean, this of course is assuming that you've already, for most players, you should have already gotten the fire armor before you get to this dungeon. Okay, so yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, I got all this done here with the whole constant damage thing and the damage armor items. I just need to kind of decide what they should actually be and draw them and put them in the game somewhere. And I need to start making on some walls. I need to get some walls up in this dungeon and some doors so that it doesn't keep trapping the player in with the wooden spikes and stuff like that. So yeah, this dungeon's gonna be pretty cool. I think it's gonna be pretty fun to play. And it's also gonna be very interesting for speedrunners. So, yeah, once again, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Thanks for all your help always, your support. Appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a good good night. And some And pleasant, pleasantness. I hope you have pleasantness. Later, later guys.